There is a formula for change with a legendary reputation around the world. And when it's combined with the concept of the tipping point, it tells a compelling story. You see, everybody is changing everything everywhere every day. And if the definition of crazy is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, well, the good news is our world is no longer crazy. And if we're not crazy, then what are we? What is going on with all this, quote, sanity that we're experiencing? And how can we thrive in an ever-changing landscape? Crazy really is less about the changing world. It is more about how we are going about changing. If we use the same approaches, techniques, methods, and tools expecting different results, that is the definition of crazy. The change formula and the tipping point can help us more confidently and competently transform whole organizations and communities in an accelerated fashion. Let's begin with the change formula. D times V times S times S must be greater than R in order for real transformative change to occur. The S was recently added to reflect the complex nature of change in our world. Notice the multiplicative nature. If D, V, F, S are zero, any one of them, it cancels everything out. Let's begin with D. D is dissatisfaction. A person must be dissatisfied with their current state in order to have a desire for real change. The key thing here is satisfaction and happiness are not the same concept. A person can be satisfied with their level of happiness. Change is likely not to happen. A person must be dissatisfied with their happiness. They can be pretty darn happy, just dissatisfied and want something more. Sometimes people are dissatisfied with their unhappiness. And there are some people that are satisfied with their unhappiness. You know that person who is completely satisfied being miserable. And even when you turn that frown upside down, the thumb is still going down. So, the next variable, you have dissatisfaction and desire. Vision, an ennobling vision of what you yearn to become. That leads to inspiration. Let's take a, a research study recently done with a large group of accountants, about 300 or so. And they took half and put them in one room, and the other half and put them in another room, and put them in small groups or teams. They then gave them the same issue. In one room, they gave them the charge of solving the problem. In the other room, they gave them the charge of designing a preferred future. When they looked in the problem-solving room, what they found was despair, blame, finger-pointing, band-aid solutions, short-term solutions, and a serious drain of human energy. In the other room, there was hope, there was ownership, long-term solutions, and an enthusiasm and heightened energy for what they have created. You take the dissatisfaction and desire, combine it with an ennobling vision, that's not enough. You need first steps, concrete actions in the short term that can lead to a commitment to action. You see, short term is the key. The action must be now. It must be when they get back to work the next day and over the next three months. Combine the D with the V with the F, and that's still not enough. There needs to be support. Things need to be in place. The necessary support and structures for follow-through. That creates conditions for perseverance. The perseverance is necessary to ensure that there is a success trajectory and making sure that people know that there's going to be things in place to help them follow through with the, the resources and the structures necessary to do that. That is the key. So D times V times F times S must be greater than the resistance to change in order to create that transformative shift toward action. Resistance is about fear. Imagine a person on a burning platform, and they have the option, and there's a helicopter, and this is a true story, where this reporter is flying around this oil rig that's on fire. The person's on the oil rig. They're standing up there, and they have choices to jump or to stay. Jumping meant possible death, cold water, high jump, sharks in the water. If there is a D, a dissatisfaction with the current state, a desire for change, it's there. If there's a V, a vision, an ennobling vision to get back home to family and loved ones. If there's first steps, jump. And if there is supporting mechanisms, people there to get him out of the water quickly. 
into safety. If that's greater than the fear of what he knows compared to the fear of what he doesn't know, that can create change in the moment. And so when that fear of jumping was less than the fear of staying on the platform, that's when he jumped. And so when the reporter said, why did you jump? He replied, it got too hot. And that's where the concept of burning platform comes from. So now how do you take DVFS and go into a large scale change initiative where you're engaging all kinds of groups and people around the community, the region, the world to help solve this particular problem? And you've got everybody needing to have their own DVFS experience coming to their own conclusion. And then you've got to work to create conditions for a collective conclusion in order for the whole system to move. Malcolm Gladwell does a great job of describing it in the tipping point when he says the tipping point is that magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and spreads like wildfire. So Harold Jarsh talks about this. He says, how can those of us not in senior roles influence those who are, upward influence, to embrace the idea that we are in the networked era and to act to create post-hierarchical organizations? And when you think about it, there's all these different groups, and you've got this meta structure, which doesn't require everybody to have to work together. They may care about the issue, this organization, this agency, this company, this institution, this group of people, and they all are tr trying to come together to solve a problem, but they don't have to, through job requirements, work together. That is where you have to use the DVFS and the tipping point to help you create that real change. And it's all rooted in trust. People come with social capital, intellectual capital, creative capital. They bring the time, talent, and treasure. And it's really important to coordinate, connect, and bring all that together to create the real change. And so you, when, you, when you invite people, you have a pitch you're creating. You think about that pitch as really an invitation for people to join you and be a part of the process and help everybody as you bring them on, every group as you bring them on, have their own DVFS connected into a collective D, a collective B, a collective F, and a collective S. That's when you create the shift. And you know, you can go slow to go fast. It's better, as Simon says here, to go slow in the right direction than to go fast in the wrong direction. And so doing and putting in place the right conditions can create an accelerated change as long as you're willing to put that in up front and create an invitation that invites people in to be a part of the solution and taking it forward. There are three levels of engagement you want to consider as you build that momentum towards the tipping point. There are leader groups that need to be connected and have their own DVFS experience. There are mid-level teams there are steering teams and change teams and project teams that are all working to try to, to solve the problem and bring it to implementation and action. They need to be connected around the DVFS. And then you've got the whole system, the people that are on the front lines, the people that are experiencing the issues and challenges. Those people need to be connected around the DVFS. And all, level one, two, and three, when they are connected around a common DVFS, that's when you get to the tipping point and real change occurs in an accelerated fashion. I leave you with this. If you want to go fast, 